The sermon text this morning comes from the first book of the Kings, and there, the 21st chapter, we find, we find there this story. Later the following events took place. Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel, beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. And Ahab said to Naboth, excuse me, Give me your vineyard, so that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near my house. I will give you a better vineyard for it, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral inheritance. Ahab went home resentful and sullen because of what Naboth the Jezreelites had said to him, for he had said, I will not give you my ancestral inheritance. He lay down on his bed, turned away his face, and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said, Why are you so depressed that you will not eat? He said to her, because I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me your vineyard for many, or else if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard for it. But he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, Do you now govern Israel? Get up, eat some food, and be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. She sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who lived with Naboth in his city. She wrote in the letters, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth at the head of the assembly. Seat two scoundrels opposite him and have them bring a charge against him saying, You have cursed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. The men of his city, the elders and the nobles who lived in his city, did as Jezebel had sent word to them. Just as it was written in the letters that she had sent to them, they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth at the head of the assembly. The two scoundrels came in and sat opposite him, and the scoundrels brought a charge against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth, cursed God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned, he is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Go, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive, he is dead. As soon as Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab set out to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Naboth, for he has gone to take possession. You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also taken possession? You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, dogs will also lick up your blood. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? He answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. I will bring disaster on you, I will consume you, and will cut off from Ahab every male, bond or free, in Israel. May the blessing of God be added to this reading. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the many ways in which you might speak to us. You open our ears, you open our minds and hearts that, whether through song, 
through music, through prayer, through silence, through fellowship, through scripture, perhaps even through words you might speak. Help us, O oh God, this day to hear what we each one need to hear. Amen. The comedian and character actor John Lovitz used to have his character on, on Saturday Night Live. Tommy Flanagan, pathological liar. In character, he made claims to have invented rock and roll, been married to Morgan Fort Fairchild, and after a particularly outrageous lie, he'd say, yeah, that's the ticket. I loved, and I still love, reruns of The Twilight Zone. There was one particular show with, with Andy Devine as Mr. Frisbee. As the character, he told these great stories about being a war hero, being a, a doctoral graduate at age 13, and a super mathematician who beat 12 early computers in a competition. Finally, in the story, he really was kidnapped by aliens, and after he escapes, no one will believe him when he tells them what really happened. After the Watergate break-up, Richard Nixon went on national TV and proclaimed, I am not a crook. After Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton went on TV and proclaimed, I did not have sex with that woman. George Bush stood up and said, read my lips. No new taxes. We live in an age and an era where the gift of lying is so pervasive that these catchphrases have become standard components of our vocabulary and we've decided to laugh as our first response to much of what we hear and don't believe. How do you know a politician's lying? His lips are moving. <laughs> it's funny and we laugh but and we know that most of the time it's not true, but there's this basic inability to trust one another that comes from such pervasive fabrication. We call it spin. But the truth is there is so often so little truth available that our minds are spinning with the, the tornado of nonsense that swirls around us. This phenomenon is, is not something new. Saying almost anything simply to get what we want is an ancient tradition. Well, it's probably not the oldest part of the Bible, but the story reported to be the oldest story. The very creation of the world and humanity as we know it and live it. The story of of Adam and Eve has that exchange between the serpent and Eve. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Say anything. The ends justify the means. The left vilifies the conservatives making outrageous claims about the dire consequences of their perceptions and misconceptions about what their opponents are saying. The right demonizes the liberals making extreme predictions that if we go their way the world as we know it is likely to end. There are battles over character and subtle nuances of who's elected to serve on the Supreme Court while the actuality is that regardless of the personal philosophies of the members, by and large, the court has held a pretty middle-of-the-road ground, interpreting our Constitution in ways that generally benefit most Americans. Not always, not in every case, but, but most of the time. I remember shopping for my first car. 
and the salesman explaining that this one I was looking at had been owned by an older woman who used it mostly for errands. <laughs>